books and movies. If written well, they leave a lasting impact on us. I hope you would agree with me on that. And even if you are not an avid reader, there might be at least one book that you read which stayed with you, which shaped the way you perceive certain things, influenced your beliefs. A Rod Dahl book, perhaps, or an Agatha Christie classic. When something holds that much of an impact, it's bound to come under scrutiny. Rod Dahl's books have hit headlines in recent days. His publisher, Puffin Books, has released edited versions of some of his bestsellers. Why is that? To make them less offensive and more appropriate for modern readers. They have been censored for sensitivity. Some passages relating to weight, mental health, gender, race have been altered. Hundreds of changes have been made to the original text. Some passages not written by Dahl have also been added. Let's just have a look at some of the edits. Have you read Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Then you might know Augustus Gloop, Charlie's antagonist in that book. Well, he is no longer enormously fat, just enormous. Gender neutral terms have been added. Factories Oompa Loompas were small men, they are now small people. In the fabulous Mr. Fox, the word black has been removed from the terrible tractor's description. The machines are now just murderous, brutal looking monsters. Feminism has also found its way into the alterations. In the new edition of Witches, a supernatural female may be working as a top scientist or running a business. She is no longer just a cashier in a supermarket or typing letters for a businessman. Now, these edits were made in good faith. Campaigners sought to protect youngsters from cultural, ethnic and gender stereotypes in literature and other media. You see, their argument was always portraying an African-American or an obese person as the villain could leave some lasting impressions on young minds. Always showing women in weak or subordinate characters could count as sexism. But the edits were not received in that light. They were meant to suit the sensibilities of this century. But instead, they stirred widespread backlash and debates. Critics complain revisions risk undermining the genius of great artists. They prevent the readers from confronting the world as it is. Booker Prize winning author Salman Rushdie came to Dahl's rescue and this is what he tweeted. Roald Dahl was no angel, but this is absurd censorship. Pen America said it was alarmed by the changes. It is a community of writers that advocates freedom of expression. Even Queen Consort Camilla criticized the curbs on expression. You see, the edits were meant to resonate with modern readers, but critics say they kill the essence of the book, that books should be available in original forms. As the alterations distort the original work, the older versions would help children develop critical thinking. It would let them react to the books instead of portraying things in a certain light. And following the criticism, Puffin Books and its parent, Penguin Random House, have decided to republish the books. In these versions, the original text will be provided alongside the edited versions. But Dahl's books were only one such example. Multiple such revisions have been made to several books over time. The James Bond novels have also been edited to remove racial references. All of Ian Fleming's Bond novels will be re-released in April to mark 70 years of the series. Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird has also had a long history when it comes to censorship. Mark Twain's The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn met a similar fate. What does all of this mean? Are we too woke to be converted by literature? Or are we moving in the right direction? What do you think? 
We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the updates on the move.